Hi, I'm Kevin Grodert, and these are my favorite traps from the Saw films. Hello, everyone. It's time to play a game. Lawrence! Oh, what are you doing? I really love the bathroom trap from Saw 1, where we first meet Lee Whannell's character, Adam, and Carrie Elwes' character, uh, Dr. Gordon. In the course of this, uh, of this story, we go from the two waking up and realizing that they're trapped to Carrie's character being in the state of mind that he can actually cut off his own foot in order to escape. And uh, we do a little bit more shorthand now with, um, with Saw films, where they go from learning about their situation to uh, you know, cutting off a limb sometimes in just a, a minute or two. So, uh, 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 I think James was rightly cautious enough to make sure that we invested the time to make sure that we believe that Carrie could actually do this. But um, really, that bathroom was where my career as, a, as an editor and a director began because from the day, first day that we started editing that film, I said, we're on to something really special here. So in, in a way, that's my favorite. When we edited the, the film, it, originally we started to get into the flashbacks much earlier in the movie, uh, but we found that the audience was really enjoying the fact that uh, there were these two guys stuck in a, in a dirty bathroom, and it was kind of cool that they were in such a claustrophobic environment. So we, we, we rethought the structure of the film quite a bit so that uh, we don't go into those flashbacks until about 15 minutes into the, into the movie when, um, when Kerry says he doesn't want us to cut through our chains, he wants us to cut through our feet. Uh, so I think, I think that's where we kind of let the audience breathe and say, okay, there is going to be more to this movie than just these two guys cutting back and forth between the two of them. But, uh, you know, then once the story gets rolling, we followed more the structure that James shot. Hello, Bobby. I want to play a game. I really like the uh, Obby's Trap, the furnace in Saw 2. Uh, had a really great time editing that. Um, I thought Obby was, was such a creepy character, and then to see him put into this, this very claustrophobic environment uh, was pretty neat. We got great performances from the other actors in the scene as they're, you know, the, most of these characters are really despicable people, but you still see the, the humanity on their faces as they're reacting to this guy getting burned alive before their eyes. Darren shot that amazing shot with a hand slaps up against the glass. I had, I had a little bit of um, inspiration just as the editor of that film. Uh, we, it didn't quite make sense or it wasn't quite clear in the way that the jigsaw tape was originally written uh, what Abby had to do to get out of this uh, trap. So we came up with the idea of, uh, of the little picture of the devil inside. And uh, in the tape, John cryptically says, Once you are in hell, only the devil can help you out. Then as he's starting to burn, he sees the little cartoon of the devil in a handle, and then it lets him know that he has to reach through the flames to, uh, to turn that handle if he has any chance of surviving. But it's a Saw movie, so of course he dies. No, no, no. People would think I'm crazy if I don't include the needle pit from Saw 2 in my list of favorite traps. You know, that was another one where uh, we, we liked it and we thought the performances were really good, but the, the very first cut was not working, uh, at least for us that were in the editing room, and it's because those, those syringes are actually plastic. So we wound up like crushing a bunch of glass and then just raking through it with a stick and recording the sound of that, and then substituting that sound into what Shawnee Smith's hands are doing as they, as they move through the needles. And as soon as we did that, it was like, ah, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. It was great, really fun cutting that scene. <laughs> the lawyer from your firm has Debbie. 90 seconds to cross this room. The steam room in Saw 6, it's, it's a personal favorite, I guess, just for, um, you know, Selfish reasons. The scene that was originally written for um, William and uh, the, the character of his uh, of his lawyer that um, that became the steam room. We, we we couldn't do the scene that was originally written, and uh, we brainstormed a lot what to do. And then finally, doing what I usually do on a soft film is is you know what sucks. What would be a really bad thing to happen? And somehow I got thinking about steam, and and William having to endure the pain of steam burns in order to help uh, uh, Carolyn Cave's character get through this maze. And it all kind of came together in my head and I told the uh, uh, Tony Ayani, the production designer, hey, what if we build a giant metal maze and, uh, you know, filled with steam and traps? And, uh, and he was like, uh, who's gonna pay for that? But, you know, it all came together and um, uh, I love the little twist at the end that uh, Carolyn thinks that 
um, you know, she's free, but then it turns out she has to kill William if she's going to have a chance of, uh, of taking this thing off her neck. She fails, and, and that's that. But I, I, I really admire her performance. It's, it's, to me, one of the most impassioned in any Saw trap. So the shotgun carousel from Saw 6, it's, it's my personal favorite. Uh, it was, at that time, the hardest thing that I'd ever shot. And uh, you know, for a long time, it remained the hardest thing I ever shot. I underestimated how hard it would be to shoot the number of, of camera angles, which wound up being over 200. 200 unique shots to make this uh, scene come together in the editing room. You need close-ups of these characters who are on a moving platform inside a cage. And so we had to figure out a way to follow their faces, but then when you think about it, every time somebody's back gets blown out and everyone else is, is splattered with blood, uh, obviously you have to stop the camera and you have to clean things up and redo things, and it just went on and on. It went on and on for days over schedule, so uh, I, I wound up um, not going over schedule in the movie as a whole in the end, but definitely on that trap I went over by several days. Also, I'll, I'll never forget when Sean Matheson, the actor, uh, playing the, the last guy to get shot. He came up to me and, you know, the, the, the words in the script were what they were, but he's, and we, you know, rehearsed them as, you know, somewhat normal. But then he said, what if I do it this way? And the, that's where he, he came up with, you spineless whipped mother And it's like, Jesus, hell yeah, you're gonna do it that way. And, uh, you know, to me, that's the most iconic moment in, in Saw 6. Look at me when you're killing me. Love it, love it. And then when we shoot him in the back or in the chest in slow motion and his, his sweater explodes with blood, uh, fantastic. Oh. Help! Hey, help! Help, please! In the Saw series, I felt like we were getting a little bit too convoluted and it was all in service of the need to keep the John Kramer character in the story even after he dies at the end of Saw 3. And so we were getting into all these flashbacks and um, you know, weird excuses and apprentices and that sort of thing. It, it, it had gotten too complicated for a general viewer to just come in and watch one of these films as a standalone. So uh, for this, it was a very high priority for me to make it very simple to understand, no matter if you knew nothing about the Saw series at all. But at the same time, by including so much of Tobin and uh, Shawnee in the story, the, the fans, I, I think, will love it because it, it, it was a work of love for everybody involved. And, uh, you know, we made it for the fans, we made it for the general audience. And, uh, you know, so far the reactions I've seen uh, indicate that we succeeded.